What's going on guys? This is Eric with Olympic Health Physics and today we're going to be talking about how you protect yourself when you're working with fluoroscopy. So in this video we're going to cover the IAEA 10 pearls for how you protect yourself in, when you're using a fluoroscope. We'll go ahead and drop a link to the document below so you can have it as a reference, but let's go ahead and get started. So tip number one, you want to use protective devices. This means that you wanna use lead aprons or lead vest, as well as thyroid shields, and if it's appropriate, using leaded eyewear. When you're wearing lead, you wanna make sure that the lead fits you comfortably, that it's not coming off or falling off. So take good care of your lead. You don't wanna fold it up or bunch it up, but above all else, just make sure that you're wearing it. Number two, make good use of time, distance, and shielding. Time, distance, and shielding are the three tenets of radiation protection. You wanna limit the amount of time that you have the uh, fluoroscope on or the amount of time that you're around the fluoroscope when it's producing x-rays. You wanna increase your distance that you are away from the radiation source, uh, which is you have two radiation sources. You have the x-ray tube itself, as well as the patient, the scatter coming off the patient. And then number three, you want to use shielding. So not only are we gonna be wanting to use lead vest, but we want to also use any sort of portable or movable shielding in the room itself. And that brings us to number three. You want to use the suspended shields that hang from the ceiling. If you have them, you want to use the under table shields or drapes or any other sort of rolling portable shields that you have in the room. Use those shields to your advantage. You want those shields between you and the patient. And with those shields, you'll decrease the amount of radiation dose that you receive by about 90%. Number four, Keep your hands out of the beam. You don't want to put your hands directly in the useful beam that is incident upon the patient. The dose there is about a thousand times higher than the dose outside of the primary beam. So make sure that you keep your hands or any other body parts out of the useful beam. Number five, pay attention to where you stand. Only about one to five percent of the radiation that enters the patient exits the patient on the other side. So what does that mean? It means that you wanna stand on the side of the image receptor or image intensifier. So you don't wanna stand on the same side of the patient as the x-ray tube itself because you're gonna end up with a lot of backscatter and a lot more radiation dose. So stand on the other side of the patient where the image intensifier is at, where the x-ray is, is on the opposite side of the table from where you are at. And that brings us to number six, which is you want to keep the x-ray tube under the patient table with the image intensifier on top of the patient. The reason for this is the same reason from number five. Because the, you have a lot of backscatter from the radiation, the radiation that's going to be coming in posteriorly from the patient is going to be scattered back down into the floor or into your lower extremities. We would rather have lower extremity radiation exposure than to have that radiation exposure coming up into our face. So positioning the x-ray tube beneath the, the table and having the image intensifier on top of the patient is going to reduce our radiation dose to your critical organs. Number seven, use personal dosimetry. So we used to call these film badges, some people call them TLDs, but you wanna use dosimetry. Depending on your organization, you may be issued one dosimeter or two dosimeters. If you have one dosimeter, it should be worn on the outside of your lead. If you have two dosimeters, one should be worn on the outside while one should be worn underneath your lead. Number eight, update your knowledge about radiation safety and fluoroscopy. That's what we're doing here. So. If you want more information on radiation protection and fluoroscopy, there are lots of courses out there that will give you a lot more information than this short video. And so I would encourage you to go check out one of those courses to get more information on how to protect yourself and protect your patients using fluoroscopy. Number nine, if you have radiation protection concerns or radiation safety concerns, address them with a medical or health physicist. Depending on your organization, you may also address them with the radiation safety officer. 
And since we're putting this information out there, if you want to address them with us, feel free to reach out to us and we can also talk with you about any radiation safety concerns that you have and help give you some guidance on your next best steps. And the last tip is remember that quality control and physics testing of your equipment is going to enable safe and stable performance of the equipment. And you also want to know your equipment, know what the, your equipment is capable of, know what settings are the most appropriate to use, understand how to orient or reorient the equipment so that you're uh, positioning yourself in relation to the patient and the x-ray tube in the best possible way for yourself. That'll help you to reduce your radiation dose to yourself. So that wraps up our 10 pearls of radiation protection for staff in fluoroscopy. Like we said, if you have questions or you have concerns, address them with your medical or health physicist or radiation safety officer, or you can reach out to us, drop a comment below, send us an email, and we'll be happy to help you out as well.